Welcome to Sports Econ 101. For those of you new to our show, imagine a few guys sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking sports and business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, well-known sports radio personality, Bruce McGowan, and Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX-TV in San Francisco. And on this show, we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. In addition, we ask sports trivia questions where we give away vacations to the first three callers with the correct answer. Our phone number is 888-660-4495. So write that number down, 888-660-4495, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia question for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. Now, the vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located one hour northeast of San Francisco. Their vac the vacations are free. Their only request is a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Even if you're not near San Francisco, check them out um, at uh, lighthouseforfun.com. It's a fun place to visit. And today's trivia theme is golf. Got a lot of questions about golf that uh, everyone should be able to answer. And uh, let's see, uh, we're also going to be talking about on today our favorite teams to root for, but could there be any subliminal refereeing to help certain popular teams advance in the playoffs because it helps revenue for the sport as a whole? Uh, certain calls just don't make sense sometimes. And we're also going to try to talk about mistakes that hurt players' careers, such as, for give you an example, Jose Cruz for the San Francisco Giants dropped a routine fly ball in the 11th inning in 2003 uh, in the National League Division Series against the Marlins, and we never really quite heard from him again. How about from college to, to pros? Uh, some make it and some don't. Uh, Archie Griffin was a two-time Heisman winner, but boy, he sure didn't make it quite as well in the pros. He didn't make it, but he just didn't do quite as well. And the questions come up why that is. Individual celebrations, are they good or bad for sports? A uh, guy doing funny things in the end zone. We're going to cover that, too. Whatever we don't cover today, we'll cover in a future show. Email us a question by going to Sports Econ 101, and we'll try to answer it on the air. This segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by IRA Services Trust Company, providing self-directed retirement accounts with more choices, diversification, and among the lowest fees in the industry. Now, I personally use them to hold my diversified IRA. Check them out at iraservices.com. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. <coughs> Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan. Now, one of the things we want to get into here is football players filing tax returns in many states. It's not just football players, it's all pro athletes. A lot of people don't know this, that they have to file tax returns in every state that has an income tax. Where really? they where yeah. they what where, where they, they where they play where they play yeah I'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <the worst. laughs> so you can you imagine yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 some of them don't have ten but, but <laughs> was, let's say you play for the Tennessee Titans and you got a road game this week at New Orleans so you have to file in Louisiana and yeah. the next week you have a game in San Francisco so you have to file in California is that well, right well yeah you wait I mean obviously you wait till April fifteenth or whatever you know well, that's right. where you come in you were a, you were an accountant so that's that's yeah I got the masters in tax but I gave it I gave it up for Lent. Or gave it up for this, you know. Hey. Um, Wait a minute, if you, if you got eight road games right, in eight yeah. different towns, you got to file tax returns for, for those eight states that you... Yeah. Unless wow! It's like, well, unless it's like Texas that doesn't have one. And that's true with the other sports, too. Yeah, baseball, it, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Yeah, now, it depends. Obviously, if you're if you're a low-hanging hero, not low, if you're like a rookie who gets, you know, low contract, then the proportion of what you're making in each state might not be enough to, to file a might not be enough to file. But I would think it would be you. But you nowadays, I mean, you're yeah, but if you're Jarek Jeter, yeah, oh, yeah. and you were playing, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, it doesn't Jeter make sense to me, though, because, I mean, that would be like if you're working for a company and the company sends you on the road exactly. and you're working on the road for a week, the company is paying your salary and you don't I have to. I totally agree with you. That's, that's right. I mean, if 
you're right, because if I work for a California yeah. company, I only pay taxes in California, even if they send me all around the country. Right. Now, yeah. this is true in the NFL? It's it's an all-pro sport. Is that right? Yeah. Why? But why? Right. Well, because each state kind of says, oh, we they want, want our fingers in the pie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some things don't make sense, yeah. but they, they just want it. Well, there's a lot of money involved there. Yeah, yeah. so they have here. Okay, well, what, they, about, what, about, what if I was a CEO of a company where, let's say, my salary was a billion dollars, whatever. It, yeah, it, and it I has, travel, and I've got companies I, all over I, the country, I, I, and I gotta right. travel to see what's going. On. I, I'm only paying taxes in the in state the that I live in. Wow. Yeah, but um, pro athletes, it's a whole different animal. It, it's sort of like you know, why does baseball have antitrust? Right, I mean that's that's been challenged, and they say, well, baseball's different. Why? Because it is. You know, it's uh, <laughs> tradition, right? So you know they, what? You know what? Mickey Mantle said, "Why does baseball have antitrust? I don't know. Why do they have antitrust? Why?" Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't trust anybody. I don't want to not trust. <laughs> mm. and, uh, and, and then if you're, like, in, for New York, they also have a city tax. Right? you got to you file a... Oh, York that's right. I worked there. in New York City. I remember that. Remember that? Yes, Doesn't Philadelphia do. do the same thing? Doesn't it, yeah, it's weird. If you, if you, New Jersey, too. If you right? worked in Philadelphia, you got to pay Philadelphia tax. Even if really? you live in the Burbs or something. Is that right? right? Delaware. Some, or of, them, some of them have rep, 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 reciprocity. <laughs> there, there you go. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Where they give you credit for uh, paying taxes in other states, but here is the here's the funky thing. This is California for you now. I don't know if they changed the rules on this. It's been a while since I looked at it, but California had what they would do is they basically look at the highest tax rate possible. So if you made only ten percent of your income in California, you just don't say, well, okay, if I made let's say a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, you say, okay, I made 10% in California, just take 10,000, put that on the tax return. No, 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 no. They say, what's the tax on 100,000? And then say, now we're going to take, and you only have to pay 10% of that. So basically, they nail you for whatever the highest tax bracket you can make. What if you were a company? <laughs> what if you were a company and you had your headquarters in Liechtenstein? Okay. You know, and, and, but you lived in Truckee. Well, Nevada. How was that? Well, is that? Sorry, oh, actually, Turkey's in California, not Nevada, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, would you? Pay, I mean, if your the base of your company was in a foreign country, would you? No, you see, if you're domiciled here, you have to pay taxes here. Dang. Yeah. We're getting around it. That's, no, that's, that's what that's all true. these offshore yeah. things are about. Huh? Yeah. yeah and the Cayman IRS, Islands. Cayman Islands. And boy, has the IRS been in the news yeah. lately? Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah. Wow. You dealt with the IRS, by the way. If you, you know, the thing is, if you have your ducks in a row, no problem. But if you don't, oh my goodness. Yeah. But even if you do have your ducks in a row, just going through an audit, it's okay. I, mean, I mean, I've represented hundreds of people before the IRS, yeah. and I, 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 I'm like Perry Mason, I've never yeah. lost a case, you know? But when I got audited twice, 10 years apart, Ooh. I didn't represent myself. Because no, I, I have that old adage, he, no. who has a, he, who, he who acts as his own attorney has a fool for a client. Right. Yeah. I figured the same thing with an accountant, you know? So I. I know I'm squeaky clean. Yeah. It's just you never know. I mean, I've had situations where, uh, you know, people say, well, why don't I just go and represent myself? And I say, the reason you want to hire me is because I'll give you an example of the sort of things that happen. You go in front of the IRS and, uh, you know, they, they challenge a deduction. You go, well, I've been taking that same deduction for the last 10 years and you guys never said anything. Oh, yeah, exactly. oh question, really? Yeah. Let's, uh, get you, you know, when I got audited, really more I, onion layers. I got, yeah. a, I got audited twice and I actually got money back as a result. You know what? That's not necessarily good, though. Because, really? yeah, I'll tell you why. Is that the IRS looks at that and says, your tax return's wrong. Oh, you yeah. know, you know, you get money back. Right. So right. next year, we're going to take a look at you again because apparently you don't know how to. I, you know, I'm being, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be well, this, was, this was my guy that was doing it. I, yeah, but still, you know what it is. Of course, it's my approval. So they can make That's a mistake right. and still burn you. Yeah, I mean, they'll wow. give you the refund, yeah. but then they may still audit you because yeah. of it. So the idea is to get a, and listen out there, audience, and a little free tax advice here. What you want is a no change letter. That's your objective. In fact, I had that situation where I got audited, you know, back in 1994. Uh, I had forgotten about a certain uh, extra charitable deduction or something. Mm. And, I, you know, it's like, you can go back to your record. It's easy to forget this stuff. And so what the guy who I hired, he kind of kept that in his arsenal. So that the situation is, well, Edward, you know, you have a, ch you have a chance. You, you have a choice here. You can get back like $1,000. What do you want to do? And I said, no, a no change letter. I don't want the 1000 Just I just don't want them on my back for the next. So right, smart, right. Smart move. Right. Well, you yeah. know your, your tax law, though. 
Uh, yeah, to some degree, yeah. I mean, enough to, yeah. 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 because here's the thing. It's well, the average yeah. smoke would be like, yeah, give me my yeah, thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get that some letter next year. Right. But generally, if you, get a, so if you get a no change letter and you get audited for almost the same sort of thing, you can show them the no change letter and they'll, they'll just walk away, generally. But in like the case where they, you got a refund and you say, well, hey, I got a refund, they go, so? <laughs> We're still going right. to audit you. Right. Now I know why my wife got rid of that tax. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you know? now, uh, I, now I know why. Okay. But, but here's something kind of <laughs> You know who my tax guy is? No. Paul Nave. Oh, that's right. The Marin yeah. County assassin. Yeah, is the, the boxer. boxer. Is he an accountant? Nave Tax and Preparation yeah. Service. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. Not to do a commercial for him, but yeah. I just did. And he was fighting until he was what? In his 40s? No, no. No, 50s. 50, 52. Yeah. He was still just fighting a couple years 52 ago. 52 when he had win number 20. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Right down the road from Marin County Assassin. Our fine offices here. Yeah. Go. Send them in to beat up the IRS if they don't like it. Uh, yeah. The but now, this is kind of interesting. Spring training, though, is a tax haven for baseball players. Now why is that? Oh, because it's all in one place, right? Well, see here. Spring training is not Florida. Florida. In Arizona. Yeah, that Florida and Arizona are the main things, okay? Okay. So professional athletes pay taxes in the state we play. We already talked about that. It's known as the jock tax. But uh, most states cal calculate a player's jock tax. That sounds kind of disgusting. Right? Yes. <laughs> It does. <laughs> Based on the Good. number of duty days. That, again, it sounds disgusting duty again. Uh, spent uh, he in, said duty. He said <laughs> duty, days. duty days. Spent inside the state divided by the days the player worked. Okay? So, you know, a game, practice, meeting, stuff like that, right? Um, but in some cases, the player duty day it total is calculated from the day he arrives at spring training until the end of the season or when the team for its playoff run. I mean, this thing can get really, really complicated. So unlike some, most sports where preseason trainings occur against teams home, spring training, you know, baseball, uh, takes place in two states, Florida and Arizona. Now, Florida does not have an income tax. And while Arizona does, it doesn't begin taxing professional athletes until the beginning of their team's regular season. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, I mean, literally, though, when you, when you it, basically, what it comes down to is holding spring trainings in these two tax havens and saved elite players like the Derek Jeter's hundreds of thousands of dollars in state income tax. Now, how does uh, how do how do colleges and universities get around? You see, just the whole student athlete thing, and they just because there's a lot of travel there too, in a lot of different states. Well, they're not paying the athletes, so right, the college yeah. Yeah, but, so, but somebody's making money, you know. <laughs> they are okay, guys. We're going to cut to our uh, first commercial break here, and here is our trivia question because the theme is golf. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the maximum number of clubs you're allowed to carry in your bag during a PGA governed competition? First three callers, the correct answer, win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888 660 4495. That's 888 660 4495 to answer this question. What is the maximum number of clubs you're allowed to carry in your bag during a PGA governed competition? Competition. What's well, that number again? Well, that number again is 888-660-4495. Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly and spell out your email one letter at a time, and we'll be right back. I think I know the answer. Sure. Spiders, do you want to they, brought, they, brought, they brought the Hanson brothers in. Do you, do you want to bring that on the air? Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Let's bring that on. Okay. Okay. The answer yeah. the question, then we'll do it. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bruce McGowan and Bernie Glenn. When we cut to the first commercial break, we ask this trivia question about golf. What is the maximum number of clubs you're allowed to carry in your bag during a PGA-governed competition? I was going to say 13, but I think I'm wrong. What's the number after 13, Bruce? <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Close. Close. Not close 14. Enough. That's right. Okay, now, Vern, you're known as Mr. Involvement. That's right. Okay. Tell us a story, because we were talking off the air about the movie Slapshot, which that's only for us old people, because that was a movie in 1978. 78? 78. That's right. That's right. Paul yeah. Newman. Paul Newman, yeah. Michael Ankeen, I think. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Good. That's right. Well, they, they, the San Francisco Spiders, they were, they, they were here for like a year, maybe two, and they played the games at the Cow Palace, and on opening night, they brought the Hanson brothers to make an appearance, so Gary Radish was doing a live shot. And we on had, the we ice had to tell there. people who the Hanson brothers were these kind of goofy nerd guys with they're kind of tall with the glasses. With the funny glasses. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and so they brought him in and, and I'm in I'm in full on hockey gear. <laughs> and I'm kinda of like skating around 
kind of like behind him as, as Gary's inter in interviewing him. And Gary says something like, uh, you know, it's too bad we don't have anybody to beat you. Yeah, how about Vern right here? And they just, bam, and they just <laughs> they just jumped on top of me. It was like, were they really hitting you, or just uh, was it just kind of in fun? fun it, was, it, was, it, was, it was in fun, but, I mean, but it yeah, was. It was some they were, yeah, yeah. They, they, okay. man, they. So those guys actually played hockey. They were they were yeah, real, they were. real hockey players. I think they were, yeah. yeah. Are you a skater? No. No, you, although I, 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 I play one on TV, but I'm not a skater. <laughs> But you can get out there and. and I've, 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 I've done some Disney on Ice tryouts and stuff like that. I've just done just falling flat on my face because it's you know. But I you know, but I try. But it's it you, man. It, That's it, tough to do. I mean, if you don't know how to ice skate, the first time you go out there, it's very. Frustrating. First year, the San Jose Sharks, they put me in goal for a practice, oh, and uh, Doug Wilson oh. was Doug Wilson was my teammate, oh. and uh, and they put me back there and they just peppered me with shots and I thought I thought all I had to do was just. You know, put on the padding, just stand between the pipes, and that was uh, it. Uh, but you got to be one of the best skaters on the team yeah, you do. to be a goalie. Really? Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and you got to learn how to do the splits. Well, yeah, you got to do the splits. You got to get a yeah. stand up, fall down, get up. Get, I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. I went to the University of Denver, and hockey was the big sport there. And I played in an intramural game once. Uh, I was coaxed into playing it, and I couldn't skate well enough, so they put me in goal. Like, what a mistake that was. I, I, you Ten know, goals, I, goals later, I was the goals, the ball, I think I'd wear one of those, you know those... Uh, when you go to parties and they have a sumo wrestling kind of uh, outfits that people can bounce up against each other. Oh, sure. I'd sure. wear one of those and just kind of stick myself in the goal <laughs> and then nothing could get by you. That doesn't work that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? Tiger Woods, a couple of weeks ago, won uh, against Sergio Garcia. And I uh, wanted to just kind of touch on this a little bit, that how money sort of changes things, like with the sponsors. Remember how when he had those, those problems, uh, his personal problems? Oh, Tiger? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, what's the first thing that happened? You lose all the sponsors, yeah. right? And now suddenly he's uh, kind of on the back, on the winning track again. Oh, yeah. And they're his best friends. Of course. They're, they're on, your, uh, on your side when you're ahead, but when you're losing, your friends aren't around. That's yeah. right. Does your friends, the, unquote, unquote. Does he have the same sponsors that he had? I don't think so. Tiger? Yeah. No, not that. Well, he, he had an arsenal of them now, but... Uh, only, only a few have yeah. have kind of come back to the fold. The big yeah, one, obviously, Nike. Nike. That's a big one. Yeah, I, that was quite a finish, by the way. With him and I guess Sergio Garcia had two in the world. God, what a meltdown! Oh my gosh! Bogey. Ouch! And they, and and how about the back and forth between the two of them before that? Yeah. Because remember, the day before yeah. they were paired together, wow. and and on 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 his backswing, Sergio Garcia claims that he his, his concentration was interrupted because Tiger. Grabbed a club out of his bag, and, oh, and there was some kind of commotion oh, right on his backswing, and he, and he just turns and he stares at Tiger, and he says, "I want a mulligan." And, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I bet he wished he had one, but but he was like, "Oh, Tiger, I don't think it's any secret that uh, he's not one of my you know favorite guys." Wow. And the Tiger says, "Oh, that's not surprising. I'm used to him complaining a lot." I mean, he says it was just back and forth. I love golf, but I just I it drives me nuts how people. Tennis is the same way. It's a little, whenever they, whenever they boo, it's not booing. It's like, <laughs> come on, well, boo. Well, well, for me, I, I was bowling was my sport, and uh -huh. it was the same sort of thing. You kind of had to be a little quiet, you know, yeah. the concentration. I, you know, I but mean, a quadruple bogey. I mean, yeah. I could, I from the tee, I could have thrown it in. Jeez. So well, you know, prob he was probably it was. Were they trying to hit it out on an island in the middle of this little lake, and he couldn't get it on the island? I mean, that's that's like hitting shooting a free throw. You know, you. Yeah. Okay, the, the game is on the line. I got to put the ball in there. There's, you know, the, I didn't realize that the basket is actually wide enough to take two two balls. Two I know. Balls. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. It is. What was that? What was that movie where um, I think Kevin Costner kept hitting the ball? Oh, oh Ted Cup. Ten Cup. Oh, yeah. Ted Cup. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so, no. move on to something here. Okay, women competing against men in sports. Now we were talking about a few weeks ago about Brittany Griner. You know, she's one of the few people who can dunk. Mm -hmm. If you're women, you can dunk. Is she going to actually try out yeah. for the NBA? No, she no. can't. No, she can't. You know, the problem is she's an inside player. She's a post-up player. But you look at her, she's about 6'8 and weighs about 210 pounds. She'd get killed. Yeah, you take take, you take your smartphone, you turn it sideways. That's pretty grind. She's, she's <laughs> great against women because they're not, I mean, yeah. she's, but she's got oh, great she finesse can. and she's very athletic. But you put her up against the average inside player in the NBA is 6'9", about 240. She doesn't have a prayer. She just yeah. eat her alive. They would eat her alive. See, now, that's the thing. Is it's, you're talking about team sports. Yeah. Right? Right. Now, potentially, on, in football, there was a coach who said that 
the former excuse me, former Packers vice president Andrew Grant had said that a woman's a woman's place might be in the kitchen. No, a woman might have a place in uh, football as like a place kicker. As a place, and there have been some in high school. There have been some, I think, even in college. As a matter of fact, we mentioned basketball. Ann Myers, who was married to Don Drysdale, actually played in a couple of exhibition games. And you know, she was five eight, about one hundred and fifty pounds, and she just got hammered. The guys weren't going to hold back against her, and she didn't want them to. And she realized that this is not, you know, and no not to women because yeah, the women athletes are great, but uh, you put them up in a physical sport against the men, and even if they're behemoths, they're going to get the, they're going to knock on their keister. Baseball, a knuckleball pitcher, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Well, there's that gal that pitches uh, for the uh, Hawaiian uh, yeah. semi, not semi-pro yeah. minor league team that came here to San Rafael. The knuckleballer. The knuckleballer. The knuckleballer. Yeah. yeah, the princess. princess. Yeah, princess. yeah. Uh, that she beat, uh, I don't know if she beat San Rafael, but she she pitched pretty well. She, she pitched pretty well. Yeah, so now, there, there was there was one sport though. Uh, this lady named last name Kulik, who became the first woman to win a PBA tour event with a victory of, and this was the Tournament of Champions in 2010. So you know here here was a woman competing uh, with a bunch of men, and uh, she ended up winning that um, winning that tournament. Wow. Well, you know I mean it happens. There are I mean you know a great one was Babe Didrikson Zaharias. George Zaharias was a great yeah, late 1950s. Yeah, but well, she did she, yeah. tennis, golf, track and field. Track and yeah. field. Oh yeah, she was the she was yeah. the she was the Quintus she was like she was like the Jim Thorpe of the like Jim Thorpe. Yeah, yeah. Time. yeah. and she did it all again. Another tragic story. Died young with cancer in, uh, in her 40s. Yeah. Now I remember the Bobby Riggs Billy Jean King. Thing. Oh, yeah. 1973. I love, I love that. But the thing, Sugar Daddy. Oh, okay, hold on. The thing that upset me though, there are two things. One, Bobby was about 180 years old. He was 58. Okay, well, yeah. close enough. All right. And the thing is, she played on the singles court part. The Virginia Slims do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I mean is that, you know, how there's doubles and singles. Mm -hmm. They shortened the court singles part for her. But uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, basically, he had to hit her singles part. She could that, that was his choice, part. though. He, he I said, yeah, remember, hey, Edward, I remember. I mean, he, he called her out. I mean, he was yeah. a, he was a man, why don't you I mean, he was really. Yeah, sure he I mean, was. I mean yeah, now, he, now, he, now, he was. now he was trying to sell tickets. Sure, he was. And he was trying yeah, to boost up rates. But boy, he, him, he called her out. He was okay. a hustler. Why yeah. not make it even? Well, it was his choice. I know. It was his his choice. Billie Jean King was at her was at her peak. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, an old guy who had uh, hustled his way to, to stardom. And, I mean, that was his moment of glory, and he blew it. Well, he beat Margaret Court. Yes, he beat yeah, Margaret yeah, Court. That was the idea. He beat her. And she was a great player. But he probably got in her head. You know, he was the kind of a guy who would get in your head. Yeah. And trick shots and little, you know, little smirks across the net. And, you know, hey, nice shot. You hit one out. out. I remember I, I used to play ping pong against him. I remember that was that, that was huge. That was, I think oh. it was like ABC, Carrie. Yeah. It was, I think it might have been in prime time. It was a, no, it, it was it was a big a, time event. He psyched her out. I, I was mentioning ping pong. I used to play a friend of mine, and I was better than his friend. And he'd always beat me because he would he would just get to me by saying little things like, nice shot. I, I said, what do you mean, nice <laughs> shot? I hit it out. No, no, I mean, it was a nice shot. No, it wasn't a nice shot. Shut up. Well, who was it uh, who, you know, Latka? Remember, didn't he want to do wrestling? And he, he went in against women. Oh, and then oh, Jerry right. Waller called oh, him out. Yeah. You remember uh, that? I do remember that one. Mm -hmm. I do remember that, that, that one. Yeah. They did the movie and Jim Carrey played yes. it. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they did that, that one. That was sort of crazy. Okay. Some guys are nuts. Yeah. All right. So, so thinking about some of these players here, okay, what about old time players against new time players? But what I mean by that is a guy like Babe Ruth probably. Could still play in today's game baseball. Oh, you, oh, you're talking about guys, guys in the prime back and so like, exactly. could they play today? Oh, right. sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, you yeah. go on and on. Baseball, yeah. yeah, but like basketball. I think so. I don't think a guy even like Bob Cousy, who was probably the best in the fifties. I he would. I don't think he'd be able to do anything. You know, the thing short. is, you have to remember the, the way the game was played in the in the fifties, especially in the sixties and seventies. There was a lot more finesse involved. Now it's a lot more physical. I think the guys playing in the 60s and 70s would have the advantage of playing, you know, the guys today can get away with just a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff and just pure athleticism. Sure. That, that's what makes the Warriors intriguing to me, not to get off on the sidetrack about the Warriors again, but they are the kind of a team, and the Spurs, that play the game the right way. And they're the good teams, I think the really good teams have to play that way. But so if you look back, I think uh, I, I think Will could play today. Oh, Will oh, could. 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 Prime. How about Russell, Russell could play? Yeah, Russell could play. Pete Maravich. Pete oh, Maravich. Yeah. Yeah. Rick Barry could Rick, play. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oscar Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. West, Oscar Robertson. Elgin yeah. Baylor. All those guys. Yeah. And also now you look at football. And some of those guys, you know, have a hard time 
again, competing against these guys who weigh 280 pounds. Uh, okay, Gail Sayers could play. Yeah, Gail I think Sayers, I yeah. think offensive line and defensive line. Jim Brown. They'd have to bulk up yeah, a little yeah, bit. Okay, hey guys, we're going to go to our second commercial break here at the Trivia Edward Portion. Brown? Good play. Edward Brown, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that name somewhere. Hey, I can play tiddly winks against the best of them. Okay, what is it called? This is golf, remember. What is it called if you shoot two over par for a hole? First big caller, the correct answer, going to win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888 660 4495. What's that number again? 888-660-4495 answer this question. What is it called if you shoot two over par for a hole? Again, 888-660-4495. I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's one of my better, <laughs> better days. Yeah. 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 Be sure to include your name, your email address, speak slowly, spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because Sports, Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Okay, good. We're almost done, I guess. Okay. Here you go, man. Okay, crack me up. Okay, so what are you looking at here? Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Murray Glenn and Bruce McGowan. When we cut to the second commercial break, we ask this trivia question. What is it called if you shoot two over par for a hole? We're obviously talking golf here. Double bogey. Double bogey. That is yeah. correct. Okay. What does a bogey come from, anyway? Oh, the whole terminology? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. That's it's a good question. Yeah. I mean, it's probably before Humphrey Bogart. I was going to say. Yeah. That would be before him. Okay, how about this? Subliminal refereeing to help certain popular teams advance in the playoffs. Subliminal refereeing? Well, I'm just saying so because I'm assuming the referee's not doing it on purpose. I mean, there's so much money. Oh, in favoring, sports. favoring, favoring. Play. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, you get a play and you go, hmm, let's see, I think they'd rather see the Spurs than the Warriors. Oh, the wow. And so, man. you know, I mean, I don't I, know. I, I hate to say it, and again, <laughs> getting back to that series, I've noticed a lot of calls going against the Warriors that normally would because the Spurs have the veteran players. The veteran players are always going to get the benefit of that. They, they've been around longer. And if there's some contact, instead of the contact, it's usually, well, you know, those veteran players know, you know, they, they're not going to fake it. No, you know, of course not. They're not going to flop. I've seen so many turnovers. I mean, like, like palming the ball. I've never seen that call. I was like, Travel. wow. You haven't yeah. seen that. That's the thing. They used to call that all the time. Yeah. Now no, they, they never call it. They never it. call it. It's just that they don't take the extra step. That's when they don't, they're not I, calling it. I love Magic Johnson. He may have been my favorite player of all time. That guy palmed the ball more than any other player I've ever seen in my life. Or what about Charles Barkley, where he would uh, stop, then he'd take two steps back behind the three-point yeah. line and shoot it. They never called traveling yeah. on that. Um, and then, well, getting into the subliminal refereeing here. This is a tough one. The Immaculate Reception. Uh, I heard uh, afterward that, and I don't know how this is true, but the referees got together and they were in their huddle. Right. That's a true story. Said, that is true, right? Yeah. That's, that's a true story. story. They asked somebody, could you guarantee our safety? Yeah. They went down to the right. If we call it the way we, so, yeah. Huh? And they no, said no. no. So they yeah. said, okay, we we're going to have to vote for Pittsburgh on that. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. how much security can you give us? Because the fans had swarmed all over the, all over the field yeah. in celebration, and upstairs they said, we keep it four guys. Touchdown! Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, if you yeah. watch the replay, it's, it's hard I mean, Ra Raider fans always get on, and it's John yeah. Madden and all those people, Jack Tatum. No, 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 no. Uh, Frenchies people would touch the ball. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. It, it, it is still, no matter how it close is. you look at that. And yeah. the funny thing is, is that if it was done nowadays, it wouldn't matter. Only Frenchie fruit guy would know. It was a, it was well, a, they, it was you know, a they free play. Yeah. Right, I mean, no, there's sometimes you such a bang bang play. Well, Franco Harris was just hanging out there. He wasn't. He didn't even know what was going on. He just figured I'm out of the play, and all of a sudden, here comes the ball. And you watch the ball too. Normally, you knock a ball down, it goes straight down. That ball went about ten yards. It fluttered. Yeah, it fluttered. yeah. 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 You, know, you look at the play. Bradshaw should have been tackled. Oh yeah, a couple, of times. couple of times. And then even when Franco Harris gets it, I don't remember who the last guy. Oh, yeah, you just, just, just push Jimmy, him out of Jimmy Warren. Well, the thing was, if he pushed him out of bounds, there was enough time in the clock that could, could have kicked the field goal and won the game. Because they were down 7-6 to six at the time. Oh, uh, how many seconds were left in the clock? Uh, there were about 8 seconds left when we scored. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting about that. Interesting about that. The Steelers don't win that game. Maybe they don't go on that great run of winning all those Super Bowls. Same thing with the Patriots. If they don't win the tough game, maybe they don't go on the great yeah, run of winning all the Super Bowls. That's a good point. I mean, Franco Harris, that was his rookie. Yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Bradshaw, that was only his like, second year. 
Third year. Third year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think of all the calls involving the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the immaculate Sea of reception. Hands, the, the, hands. The, 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 the Holy Roller. Well, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the Sea of Hands wasn't a call, but the Holy Roller. Okay, right. I, I don't, I, the Sea that of was, Hands is which, which one? That was the playoff game against Miami, and oh. uh, Clarence Davis made an incredible catch. He had the worst hands on the Raiders, but he made an incredible catch between three defenders. And pulled it down. And the Raiders won the game. And the Raiders won the game. It, was a, it knocked out the two-time defending sta- uh, champ. I was going to say Stanley Cup. I'm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> NFL champion Dolphins. Yeah. How about how, how about this? This is something that would never happen. It never. The Heidi game. Yes. Oh, it would I never happen. I was there for that one. I remember really? that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing was that uh, that wasn't a controversial play. It was just the Jets making two huge mistakes. Yeah. They didn't pick up Charlie Smith out of the backfield on a, on a short pass, and he goes. 40, 50 yards for a touchdown. And then on the ensuing kickoff, Dick Christie, and I never, I'll never forget this because I've talked to Dick Christie years later, one of his own players runs into him and knocks the ball out of his arms. Wow. And it's rolling on the ground. The Raiders pick it up and score a touchdown. And then, there, then, there's, and then there's the NBC network switcher well, in New say, York that yep. they couldn't get a hold of in time. Yeah. And, they and he off. played Heidi. the movie yeah. Heidi I was gonna say that. before I was gonna, the end of the game. I was going to explain that to the well, audience for those young players that out there who yeah. don't know what the 1968 is Heidi. 1968 yeah because yeah. yeah, everyone wants to see Heidi instead of an exciting football game right well this is back east only though. <laughs> on the west coast of course in those days they still had the blackout but if you were in LA you saw it or if you were in Denver you saw it but if you're in New York and you're a Jets fan did you not see did it. not see it and that was uh, somebody went later said that uh, that was the best um, advertisement for the old American Football League because that same year the Jets got the revenge knocked the Raiders out in the AFL title game and then won the Super Bowl Put Joe Willie Namath on the map. Joe Willie Namath from yeah. Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and Alabama. That's and right, Alabama. Well, Bear Bryant. And what did Joe Maybe. say to the reporters by poolside? He said, hey, I, think you're gonna, I guarantee we're going to win that game. Win that game. Guarantee. That's right. Yeah. And they beat the Colts. That was a bad year for Baltimore that year. Yeah, well, they lost the. Uh, oh, that's right. That was, uh, Orioles lost yeah. the World yeah, Series. Right. Of course, the I was, Bullets I was big, lost the NBA championship. Yeah, that's right. I was, I was a big fan. I still remember Ron Swoboda. That was oh. one of the best catches I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Hey, but, but, but for as bad of a year that was for Baltimore, what a great time it is right now if you're a Bay Area oh sports God. fan. Well, yeah. as it, and, I, and, I, and I made mention of this on Facebook, and, and, and Bruce commented it. Uh, yeah, go back to what, 1989, yeah. 1989. When, when the sports scene was oh, yeah. this good, where everybody was good. Yeah. <laughs> Earthquake okay. World okay. Series. So you get, the the day, okay, get this. I get married. October 14th in 1989. Wow. Okay. Oh, my God. Three days before the quake, first game of the World Series. And I remember telling my wife when we were getting married, right? I said, uh, you know, watching the Cubs lose to the Giants. And I go, oh, my goodness, we're going to have a Bay Bridge series here. And, oh, shoot, the first game's going to be on our, our wedding day. I said, sweetie, I go, we got to make this kind of a short I go, I go, no, 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 hold on, I'm going to, I'm going to stay there the whole time, but I said, you know, we got a lot of people who are going to go home and watch the World Series, and she left, she said, what are you talking about, everyone wants to go to our wedding, I go, well, yeah, they don't want to spend too much time there, they want to go watch the World Series, you know, she doesn't be happy about that, and then Uh, when the, when the um, quake happened, we were in Hawaii, and people kind of went, please don't get me, I'm sorry, the quake. Oh, oh, did the earth move for you, baby? Yeah. yeah. Did the earth move for you, baby? <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick thing here. Uh, mistakes or errors, mistakes or errors that hurt players' careers. Uh, you have guys like Bill Buckner, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, that guy, he was actually a very good player, right? He yeah. played for the Dodgers, right? And then he gets traded and he gets hurt. He plays for the Red Sox. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cubs too. Played for the Cubs. Played for the Cubs. Yeah. And he was good, but I guess it was 18 sort of years. 18 years in the league, or yeah. in both leagues. But that, boy, did that ruin his that, life. Oh my wow. God. Well, I, mean, I wouldn't say it ruined his life, but it certainly put a cast a pall on it. I mean, he had to live with that, and what a pain in the rear to have to walk around. And nobody remembers how great a career he had. Oh, yeah. just that ball went right through your legs. Yeah. Cost but you the World Series. But at least 2004, when they won the World Series, I, they finally forgave him. Yeah. 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 He, wasn't, he didn't care by that time. He Gone. You know, in, the, in, the, in the football world, I don't know why they just flashed for my eyes. How about Jackie Smith dropping a touchdown oh, yeah. pass oh, for, the, for the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they lost that game by four points to the Steelers. To the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. There's no yeah. one where the Steelers oh, get off the hook. I, I, I hate the Steelers. <laughs> I know. Well, well, I did. I don't hate them. Yeah, I, I was not a big Steelers 
Uh, Wasn't there a bad call against Ronnie Lott in the 83 against, NFC Championship Against game? Washington. Yeah. Uh, two bad calls. One against him and one against Derek Wright that allowed Washington to drive downfield for the winning field goal. After the Niners came back from 21 points down in the fourth quarter. Man. Uh, what was that? Pass interference call? Yeah, been? two of them. One of them was, was possibly <coughs> legitimate. The other one, no, no chance. It was a terrible call. Roger Craig, fumble. Oh, against yeah. the Giants. I still I saw some nightmares about that one. Might, he, might, he might have finished out as a 49er. That was his last play as a 49er. Yes. Yeah. That's um, so sad. And, and, you know, so you get guys like that, okay? And then you also have, okay, Scott Norwood, Norwood right? Yeah. Missing, wide, the, right? missing the shot heard around the world yeah. from Buffalo. From Buffalo then, for, for the uh, Super Bowl. And they went into the Super Bowl four years in a row. And lost. And lost every time. And this mm-hmm. was the only time that they were even close. Yeah. That was the first one, too. Yeah. The first of four. That uh, kind of set the tone. How about the refs jobbing? The U.S. Olympic basketball team oh. in 1972. Oh, yes. And Russia wins that Woo! one, steals that one. I think to this day, they never got they they never accepted their medals. Alexander yeah. Beloff scored the game-winning uh, basketball. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got to go back to that to realize yeah. how frustrating that was. It's like they kept trying to figure out a way for Russia to win. They finally figured out the way. Well, all the talk didn't start. Oh, well, there was a timeout. Oh, there was this. That. Oh, oh, man. Oh, I had to go get a hot dog. Yeah. Notice ever since then, they've been that since then. Now, whenever we have the Olympics, we get our best athletes there as a joke. I mean, you put yeah. the best NBA players against the rest of the world. No chance. Except no chance. What happened? Uh, wait, okay, the Dream Team, and then after that, though, they did. That's true. They lost. They did. Yeah. yeah. I stand corrected. I think, was okay. a, I think, was, I think it was a John Thompson <laughs> coach team. I think. But did they lose the Olympics? I thought they yeah. lost in the preliminary. They lost in the Olympics. I think they, yeah, I don't think they got a gold. Okay. I think they got, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if they got silver. I think they got bronze in that one. I think Italy and Spain. <laughs> Guys, I gotta laugh at this one. Leon Lett. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I was at that game too at, at Pasadena, and uh, Steve Tasker. Sure, touchdown. Tasker. And nope, yeah, Steve nope. Tasker comes up from behind and knocks the ball away. He's holding it out and then like a loaf of bread. Okay, but, 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 the, but what was more to me funnier was the play that he did at Thanksgiving. It wasn't you know a, it wasn't a playoff game, but it's Thanksgiving in the snow in Dallas, which hardly ever snows. And a field goal kick by Miami. And, we're going, and it gets blocked. It's like, oh, well, don't touch it, don't touch it. And about you know, 15 seconds goes by. Well, no, maybe not that much, but a lot of time goes, seems to go by. And there's Leon Lett trying to jump on the ball. He doesn't need to touch it. Yeah. And, of course, it squirts out from underneath him. Mm-hmm. Miami gets it, kicks a field goal, wins the game. Love that. Leon okay. Lett. Yeah. Hey, how about locally here? Jim Marshall running the wrong way against oh, the 49ers. Yeah. <laughs> and scoring a that, touchdown at Keysar Stadium. Yeah, yeah that's Very that. famous play. Turned into a safety. And Bruce Bosley, the, the 49er center, comes over and congratulates him. And Marshall's going, what do you mean? He says, hey, you scored a safety for us. Thanks, guy. <laughs> of course, the, the Vikings had the last lap. They won that game. And the funny story about that is the uh, 49ers, well, uh, I digress. Go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. No, no. It actually, it just reminded me of another story. The, the Giants, when they won uh, a playoff game uh, against the Dodgers, Lon Simmons was doing – uh, the play-by-play of the 49er game that same day at Keysar because he could do both games. You know, Russ Hodges is doing the game. Ed Candle's going to be Bill King. Anyway, Russ Hodges, uh, or Lon Simmons says, all of a sudden, you know, we're, the 49ers are coming to the line, and everybody starts cheering, and then nothing has happened. It turns out everybody had their radios on listening to the Giants won a playoff game at Candle City Park. So, and then yeah, funny, they had the transistor radios yeah, going. I remember oh, yeah. those, sure. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Romo's bad snack, watch the snack. Oh yeah, on a on a on a on a was it a field goal or was it an extra goal. point? Uh, it was on the field up goal. in Seattle, right? Field goal. Seattle. Yep, yeah. against Seattle. Uh, yeah. No, he's kind of turned it around because you know he's trying to come back a little bit, but it hasn't actually. Still really hasn't there. won a big one. No, so. that's too bad. You know, I, if you play for the Dallas, well, they gave Cowboys, him a lot of money. If you play for the Dallas Cowboys, those ones are gonna. You know, you're in the you're in the uh, spotlight all the time. You're under the microscope, the, the magnifying glass. If the president. If President Kennedy had not been assassinated in Dallas, I wonder if the Cowboys would have had that national right. It seems like from that point on. Yeah, that's an interesting theory. Yeah. They were known as, oh, yeah, you, you know, you, you know. Really? You think it's from the Kennedy? Well, I, I know I know they lived with that stigma for a while. Yeah. It was oh, just yeah. getting going. Go down to Dallas sometime, by the way. Again, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but go down to Dallas sometime and walk around Dealey Plaza and then go up to the Texas book school depository it's no longer called that there on the 11th floor there's a museum and you can actually go to the spot where lee harvey oswald allegedly took oh, a shot at kennedy wow. amazing okay wow. guys we're going to cut to our third and final trivia question commercial break three under par is a double eagle 
right? What is, what else is it known as? There's another word for it. Okay. First three callers with the correct answer on a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse, the number four, fun.com. Call 888-660-4495. That's 888-660-4495. You're going to remember this. Yeah. To answer this question, three under par is a double eagle. What else is it known as? Make sure to include your name, email address, speak slowly, and spell out your email one letter at a time. And don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Well, even even I don't know that one. I don't know that one. I don't know that. An albatross. <laughs> I was going to say. Al Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with sports radio personality Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn of CBS Affiliate in San Francisco. When we cut to the third commercial break, we ask this trivia question. Three under par is a double eagle, but what else is it known by? The answer is an albatross, and Bruce had thought it was a condor, but uh, eh, they're, I guess they're about the same size. Okay, um, let's see. Next week, we or in the next coming weeks, what we're going to try to cover is from college to pros, how some don't quite make the same impact. Uh, they do really well in college, but when they hit the pros, they might not do so well. Also, individual celebrations, is that good or bad for sports? Uh, we're also going to maybe talk about worst contracts in history and managers playing their high-paid players, even if they're not playing well. What about uh, kids not getting autographs as easily as they used to? And freedom of speech. How come some uh, players just don't get that uh, same freedom as other uh, people in the world? Steroids, is it worth the risk? That's something else we need to get into. And I want to thank my co-host, Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn, and our sponsor, who is IRA Services Trust Company, providing self-directed retirement accounts with more choices, diversification, and among the lowest fees in the industry. Now, I personally use them for, to hold my diversified IRA. You need to check them out at iraservices.com because they do provide the lowest fees and they do give the best service. So check them out, iraservices.com. Tell them Edward sent you. Thoughts for the day. Michael Jordan makes more money from Nike annually than all of the Nike factory workers in Malaysia combined. Kind of an amazing statistic there. And in 1910, football teams were penalized 15 yards for an incomplete forward pass. Huh, no wonder they always ran the ball. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports talk topics from a business perspective, and we're going to be giving away vacations again for answering sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown, and we'll see you next week. So long.